Africa is a very beautiful continent. And I'm sure you attested to that beauty, and especially that of Cape Town, when you were here this morning. But unfortunately, to contrast its beauty, Africa has also been plagued by the largest wave of forced migrations. In fact, the United Nations Refugee Agency reports that post-1994, Africa has seen its largest wave of forced migrations beginning 2001. And this is a serious problem. It's a problem because Africa has been perceived as an unstable continent for the longest time, and this has hampered its growth. And this has been due to factors such as the occurrence of natural disasters and extreme weather conditions, and also shrinking economies caused, unfortunately, by growing populations that fail to meet the growth of GDPs. Now, what many of you may or may not know is that I'm actually um, an immigrant. I left my home in Zimbabwe in 2012 and came to South Africa in search of hay, <laughs> in search of fair opportunities, and a lot of what I'll be talking about today strikes very uncomfortably close to home. So for the next couple of minutes, I'll be talking to you about artificial intelligence and how we can use it to curtail the factors that ultimately lead to forced migration. And just to give you a prime on AI, um, it is the theory and development of computer systems performing tasks that normally require human intelligence. And this includes tasks such as image recognition, um, translation, and decision making. And we actually use AI every day, and it's become so ubiquitous that we barely notice it. And I'm just going to give you an example. Um, so picture searching for Kanye West, right? So um, you go to the Google search pane, and you type in Kanye West, and you get this. Not quite Kanye, right? <laughs> um, OK, so in as much as we know the person, Kanye West, there's actually a whole place south of Botswana with 45,000 other persons. And surely this should trump Kanye West. But when we enter a search term into the search pane, our underlying assumption is that Google knows what we're searching for. And Google knowing is artificial intelligence. A couple of months ago, my team and I worked on an artificially intelligent software for Heineken for use during the UEFA Champions League um, final. And what it did is it collected tweets around the world that revolved around football banter. And it, in turn, was able to converse with people on Twitter in a manner that seemed 100% natural and fluid. Now, unfortunately, after the campaign elapsed, we then had to shelve the bot. And I thereafter thought about how we could maybe repurpose the core structure of the software and use it for social good. So we stripped away all the football banter, and we replaced it instead with data from sources including largely data from the World Bank. And this data included data sets such as population growth and the incidences of extreme weather conditions and GDP growth. And what it gave back to us were very interesting patterns around when countries had reached tipping points that led to mass migrations and how this co correlated to events such as um, famines and uh, shrinking economies. Now, armed with this freshly created algorithm, we then began to explore the possibilities of AI within the sub-Saharan context. And why this was important to us was there's actually a wealth of data around Africa, and this data is used mainly as a checklist, and very rarely has it been used to map the way forward for Africa. So I'm just going to give you an example of how I would use AI in my personal context. So I live in this suburb called Newlands, which is in the southern portion of the Western Cape. And like a lot of South Africans living around me, I often wonder about the availability of electricity, especially in the wintertime. So what if there was a way for me to use historic, historic data and be able to predict whether or not in the next winter I'll have electricity in my household? So I can look, for example, at this data. So this is the energy intensity level of primary energy. It's such a convoluted title, I know. But what it is, is it's the amount of energy units it takes to create one gross domestic product. So from the initial trajectory, I can see that in the next year, there's a high likelihood that this will continue to drop, and that's a very good thing. I can also look at other data sources, such as government expenditure and renewable energy. 
I can also look at the privatization of the energy sector and the growth of non-renewable sources such as nuclear energy. And these will give me an indicator that next year, winter, I definitely will have electricity. And this is amazing to me, okay? And this is amazing because I can then plan around that. In the event that I would not have electricity, I'd be able then to augment my energy production in the house with maybe using um, solar energy or look at other methods of limiting the use of electricity in my household, such as maybe getting a smaller geese and have, having shorter like showers or something. So um, the reason why I showed you this is because outside of its use in search, AI can very easily improve our everyday lives depending on how we use it. And I'd just like to take us back to the data that I mentioned, which is the data from the World Bank. And let's look at Namibia. Namibia is one of my favorite countries, and it was actually my first choice country before I came to South Africa. And please, can we just contain this here? Don't tell home affairs. <laughs> and um, so what if I wanted to predict within the next five years if Namibia would face a migratory crisis that would lead to a migration? So I could look at a factor such as population growth. And okay, so I can see that this has been on the rise over recent years. And okay, I could be worried, but um, I could look at another data source. So say maybe let's look at the GDP growth. Okay, this has actually been rising exponentially. In as much as it has dipped in the past two years, the median trajectory indicates that it will continue to rise in the next five years. Okay, cool, so I can move to Namibia. <laughs> and then I'd like us to look at another country and um, this country is actually very unique. And um, <clears throat> Zimbabwe is a very, very unique country. It's had an incumbent president who's been in power for over 20 years, and that factor alone puts it in what we call the orange zone. So to use the same metric and predict whether or not Zimbabwe will face a migratory crisis based on economic reasons in the next five years, I could look at the GDP growth. So you might see a growth from where this graph starts, and that's in 2008, but bear in mind that at that point, Zimbabwe had faced its largest economic meltdown ever since independence. And for the first time over the past two years, Zimbabwe started to see a decline in the growth of its GDP, and we anticipate that this will continue to go on. I could look at other factors, such as the food production index, and what this is is um, the amount of food that is produced per square hectare, and I see that this is also being, uh, this is also declining and will probably continue to do so. And what this means ultimately for Zimbabwe is that it will bring back memories of the images that many of us are accustomed to, many of which we attribute to Zimbabwe when we see, but these are images that many people are familiar with, but very few have lived. Bear in mind that there is currently a 10 to 15% margin for error within the algorithm, and we're working on making that as fine as possible by using the data in the best possible way. And there's, of course, always the ever-present possibility of new information changing the trajectory, and this is where it gets interesting. So what we've then done is we've taken reliable, trusted sources of news and used them as real-time data sources to shift to a degree the prediction trajectory. Now, in as much as this might nullify to an extent the base prediction, it still gives you leeway to act on the predictions based on the magnitude and the severity of the development. This algorithm will assist civic organizations in both their grassroots and high-level politicization efforts. It will also assist progressive governments to ensure that the predictions made will not adversely affect the countries over which they preside. And it is currently in private beta and will be, good news, releasing all our data, all our code to a public repository so like everyone around the world can explore their own possibilities. Please clap. I'm kidding, don't do that. <laughs> And um, we'll also be building a very easy to use tool for governments and civic organizations, for corporations, and for individuals as well to use as an exploratory checklist and impending humanitarian crisis identifier. Thank you. <laughs>